Good afternoon, everyone. Good to see everyone in already. Good to see Jackie, good to see Roger, good to see Jared, good to see Henry from Applewood Distillery. Hope you're all well. Today we're doing a little bit of a different episode. We're going to be looking at fortified wines and why are fortified wines so important to the whiskey industry? And more importantly, I quite like fortified wines. So we, we're going to get go through, we've got a lot on the table here today. We've got lots of different fortified wines. We've even got a little bit of a special one at the front. And if we want, by popular demand at the end, we will bring back our segment of mixing our very nice whiskey with something very interesting. So we'll put that to a vote at the end. But yeah, good to see so many people in. Today on this uh, lovely Wednesday afternoon in Melbourne, the weather's improved. Down in Port Arthur, we're still full steam ahead with the brewery. And yeah, it's nice and busy. Sanitizer's is still going and our cellar door will be opening up this weekend. So that's good. So if you want to get down there, bottle sales, but no tours just as yet. Let me just get to, got lots of people in. Good to see Banyol Shed. They're from down on the, uh, the Tasman as well. Good to see Joseph. Good to see Whiskey Travellers. Good to see Josh. Good to see the Van Diemen. Good to see Sona and Whiskey Throttle. Hope you're all well. So before I keep rambling, let's get into what a fortified wine is. And by definition, a fortified wine is a wine that has been, which has a distilled spirit added to it. Normally brandy or a grape based spirit. So that's sort of the, the basic of what a fortified wine is. But then we get into this massive topic of different kinds of fortified wines and then different names. And even in Australia, it's all very complicated now because we used to call wine fortified wines a certain thing, but regulations have now changed. So. Let's start off with the main categories of what fortified wines are. So you've got sherry, you've got port, you've got Madeira, you've got masala, then you've got a pera, and then you've got tawny. They're the, the major categories. But then within those categories, you've got ruby port in your port, you've got different kinds, you've got pinot ports and stuff like that. In sherry, this is where, this is my favorite. So the sherries, you've got PX, you've got Manzanillo, you've got Amontillado, you've got Oloroso, and you've got all these different ones. And then you get to Australia. Before 2010, you could call a port style wine port. Now, however, we call that a pera or tawny. And I've got lots of different ones today. So I think before I sort of ramble on too much, we're gonna make a little drink first up and then I'm gonna tell you about the different styles of what each of these are. And I'm very excited to drink these. I spent all of yesterday afternoon going through all the nine bottles I had bought. And yeah, it's, it's really cool to see everyone. We've got lots of people in for a Wednesday, have I? So good to see people. Um, good to see you, Whiskey Travellers. Good to see Steph. Hope you're well. And let's get into a drink. Today we're going to be making a Juniper Port Fizz, but we're not going to be using Port, we're going to be using Tawny, which is the Australian version. So you've got different kinds of Tawny. You've got Australian Tawny, Classic Tawny, Grand Tawny, and Rare Tawny. And they're the Australian categories. And that refers to how old it is and what kind of grapes they're using. Good to see Tom as well. Hope you're well. But that's enough of me rambling on. Let's get into our first Juniper Port Fizz. So what today we're going to be using is 45ml of our Classic Gin, some fortified wine, lemon juice, sugar syrup, and top it up with soda water. So we're gonna add some ice to our glass, and then we're gonna shake this one. We're gonna be making a shaken and a stirred drink today. So that's enough there. Then get our cocktail shaker. I've got heaps on the table today. With, I think I've got 14 bottles of fortified wines and all our, our other spirits too. So yeah, nice and busy. Feel free to ask any questions at any time as well. And then we're gonna start building our drink. So yeah, what this calls for is 45 mil of our classic dry gin. So today, we're gonna to keep it nice and simple. We're gonna be using our star of the show, our McHenry Classic. We haven't used this for a couple of weeks and I thought we could use the Christmas gin, we could use the summer, but today, we're gonna to keep it nice and simple. So yeah, 45 mil. So that goes in. Look, I probably should have put my cheapest ingredient in first, but I always forget that. And then, so yeah, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna put in our lemon juice, so 22.5. So I pre-measured that just to make it easier. Put that into our shaker. Then we're gonna be using a little bit of our sugar syrup. So I've just pre-made this earlier as well. And this just calls for 15 ml. So half a shot. Put that in there. And here is where we get our fortified wine into this. So what we're gonna be using today is I'm actually gonna be using, ah oh no, the topax for later. We're gonna be using an apera from Seffield Field in South Australia, one of the big houses of fortified wines. I know it calls for a uh, actual port, but I just really like this stuff and I want to have a bit of a play around. Oh, actually, firstly, we're gonna have a bit of a taste. Got my little port glass. And as you can see, that is a beautiful, dark, rich color. A little bit higher in alcohol, 22.5%, but that's beautiful. This stuff's just unreal. This one has that little bit of alcohol bite and not overly sweet, like a Pedro Jimenez 
all the uh, toque that we'll topake that we'll get into later. That's awesome. We'll sit there for later. It's going to be really fun today. Today, a bit more nerdy this week, just showing off how the different things. And we're going to talk about how fortified wines affect the whiskey production. So, let's make our drink. So this one, fifteen mil as well. So put that in there. So we, this is a fizz. So what we're going to do is we're going to shake this up, and then we're going to top this off with soda water. So let me just put that there. Then get our cocktail. All right. Now, I make a mistake every week of not actually securing this into place. So let's go. And that's all good. Good to see uh, Cody in, good to see Nick. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna strain this into our glass and then we'll top that with soda water. So really quite a simple little drink. And what this is gonna be, is you're gonna get that lovely juniperness coming through from our classic dry gin and all the botanicals we use there, but that port's gonna give that that really rich, decadent flavor that we want. And then, nice and simple, soda water. Top that up, let the bubbles not overflow, and then, really simple today, little lime garnish, and that is a juniport fizz made using Australian apera. That's awesome. That's so cool. I really like that. <laughs> I do this every week. I make a drink for the first time and think, oh, that's not bad. But this is really cool. You're getting those beautiful, rich, fortified wine characteristics. And then that gin, this is just a super summery drink. I really enjoy this. And it sort of works for the day we've got. Just a nice little winter's day. But actually, that, that, didn't, that didn't make any sense. It is good for a winter's day. And it is good for a summer's day because you've got that freshness coming through and you've got that richness from the port. All right, that's our first drink. Now let's get, I'm gonna see, um, good to see lots of people in. Good to see Sim, good to see Tess, good to see Emily Cop Jewelry. Hope you're enjoying this. Now let's get into the real nerdy side of this. We're gonna talk about the different kinds of sherries and ports, of pears, all I've got on the table. So we're gonna start off probably at the start of our flavor profile. This is Tio Pepe. This is Fino Sherry. So Fino Sherry, so Sherry comes from Spain. And this is the driest. It's almost like a really salty white wine. Goes really well with mussels, goes really well in cooking. You can have it with oysters. And this is the base of what your flavor spectrum starts with. I'm not gonna go through them all. I'm just gonna try my favorites. This one, it's really nice, but as I have a bit of a sweet tooth, I'll, I'll try the ones at the end. So this is what this is. Yes, starts at the, this is the flavor profile that we get at the start. Nice, salty, really pale straw color. And then we move on to a manzanilla or manzanilla. And these all come from Jerez in the Andalusian mountains in Spain. This is a bit more, it's very similar in flavor profile, but it's a little bit rounder. It's got a bit more of a nuttiness to it. And it's a good little step up. Still quite dry. I think still works really well with seafood, pork, things like that. And that's where, yeah, these are really great price. I just went to my local bottle shop, picked up all these different kinds and yeah, definitely try what you like. So, <laughs> Good to see some people in, plumber and plumber. Someone saying, oh my God, not this guy again. That's all right, you're stuck with me, so that's all good. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get onto our more richer styles of sherry. So we're gonna start with the Amontillado. So these are starting to get into the aged ones. So what we've got here is Amontillado and Oloroso. Oloroso is what you mainly get when you season a whiskey barrel. And that's sort of why we're talking about these today. A lot of the whiskies, half the whiskies that we make are in port, sherry, apera, and tawny casks. So that's where we're sort of getting this from. Amontillado is a bit drier, sort of moving up into that sweeter, and then you've got the Oloroso, which is a little bit sweeter, but still in that dry category. So there's so much to talk about this, but this is just a general overview of what's going on. So then we get to, I think, the king of all the sherries. And this isn't everyone's cup of tea, but this is Pedro Jimenez. And Pedro Jimenez is sticky date pudding in a drink. So I love this stuff. We'll have a, I've got an open bottle here. What we'll do is we'll actually, we'll finish this one. That's lovely. As you can see by the color, that is rich, dark. Pedro Jimenez is, if I had to choose between whiskey and Pedro Jimenez, it would be a very tough decision of what I actually would uh, have to choose. But yeah, Pedro Jimenez, it's a very different kind. This is at the sweet spectrum. It's almost syrupy. You can see just by that consistency, you can't see through it like the rest of them. 
And that's, that's really interesting. You see a lot of Pedro Jimenez barrels as well. However, I think Oloroso Sherry actually suits whiskey production more because it's a lot more nuanced. You don't have this out and out sweetness coming through. So that's sort of why my personal opinion and sort of how we do it at the distillery, we don't have any PX casks because we don't think that suits the spirit we're producing. So that sort of sums up what the Spanish style is. Now we're gonna get on to the most confusing ones. We're gonna get on to the Australians. And here we have, let's move these up. We've got heaps of bottles here today. We've got lots of different ones. And that's sort of gonna lead us to our second cocktail today. So what we have here is we have Tawny, we have a Pera, and we have Topaque. We'll start with Topaque. Up until a couple of years ago, Topaque was known as Tokay or Tokaji, which is Hungarian wine. Because of the laws that have been passed now and because the European Union likes to actually have their, their wine sort of geolocated, like Champagne, Cognac, Armagnac, things like that, that's why we don't now call them their European names. That's why you have Tawny, which is port really. It's a port style wine, but we can't call it port anymore. So they're called Tawny. And then Sherry's known as a Pera in Australia. So a lot of the time on whiskey barrels, there's a great article by Luke McCarthy sort of explaining why we should use a Pera and Tawny and Tokay on our things instead of labeling it as port and sherry barrels. Cause that's really what should be happening. So these are probably three that I really like. De Arenberg, um, this is a nice little Tawny. And then what we've got is our lovely little uh, a Pera from up in Sepulchfield in South Australia. And then this one's utterly amazing. It's a Topaque from our Rutherglen from Morris. And we actually get a lot of our Rutherglen casks from Morris at the distillery. We actually just released a Tokay because at the time of production, we could still call it Tokay, a Tokay finish cask, uh, whiskey. And that's with the distillers collection. So definitely go check that out. They've got two of our whiskeys this month. So yeah. Now let's get into our second cocktail of the day. Good to see Emma, GeForce. Hope you're enjoying my video. All right, let's get into it. So we're gonna be making a Topaque Old Fashioned. So I've had my mixing glass here, just chilling, and then we're gonna get our nice old fashioned glass. We're gonna have a bit of a stir today. Put our nice big sphere of ice in there, and then we're gonna fill it up. Let me just get my ice. And here we go. So yeah, we'll make this, give it a bit of a stir. So. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our whiskey. So today we're gonna to be using barrel 19 because that's the one I've got open. And this calls for 60 mil. So quite a boozy little drink. We haven't actually ever made old fashions on here before, but we'll give it a shot today. Our plum on plumber, he says Tokay is okay. I think that's Crafty's um. I think that's the one he's been making, Tokay okay. Eh, we, no, we won't anymore. Tokay's a really interesting spirit. I quite like it because I do have that sweeter tooth. So, the Tokay whiskies that I've tried, they're almost very light and floral, and they're just great. Now what we're gonna be using is 22.5 mil of our Topake. This tastes like apricots, it's, it's awesome. So 22.5, put that in there. So this is gonna be quite a rich old fashioned. Not your traditional one using your bourbon or your rye's, but we like to do things a little bit differently here on Whiskey Wednesdays. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in 7.5 mil of maple syrup. So this is the recipe that I've found. I'm actually only gonna add in five mil, which is one bar spoon. And that's just because there's enough sweetness already coming through off our tokay, so yeah. And we'll put that in there. And then all we really need is a couple of dashes of Angostura bitters. So we'll put that in there as well. Just don't get Angostura all over your glassware but that's all right. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna give this a stir. We've got this nice and cold. We don't really wanna dilute it too much. Good to see Darry, good to see the boring life of Jim. Good to see Jackie as well. Hope you're all well, guys. Lovely. Let's have a bit of a taste. Ooh, really cool. Then we'll get our julep strainer and we're gonna strain this into our glass. Perfect. Look at that. Let me just put this over here. And in true old fashioned style, what we're gonna do is a nice piece, a nice big piece of our orange. Get all those juices out of it, just give it a nice squirt. And then yeah, chuck that in. Old fashions are meant to be nice and rustic. 
Yeah, I need more ice. I actually don't like them that cold, so I like to sort of get that nice, warm sort of feeling, which is a bit weird, but that's what I quite like. And that's our, yeah, that's our Tokay Old Fashioned. And that's awesome. It is a, a little bit on the sweet side, but that's how I like it. You've got that beautiful whiskey note coming through, that topake adds that nice roundness. Oh, unreal. The maple syrup gives it that nice little winter warming effect. So I think it's a really cool little drink. Definitely ask any more questions. And that sort of brings us to, yeah, sort of just a quick summary of what we're sort of looking at today. What we use at the distillery, we're using a combination of a pera, tawny and topake casks. Half of them are American oak and half of them are French oak. Then the other half of what we're using is bourbon, but we're not gonna look at that today. So X Maker's Mark, X Heaven's Hill, Russell Reserve, things like that. Um, Sona says, I love how you enjoy your own cocktails. Yeah, I surprise myself all the time. So I do love cocktails and this has been a great experience over the last couple of months in isolation, using our great McHenry products and showcasing how we can make really cool products at home, especially on Whiskey Wednesdays where we sort of mix whiskey and sort of break down that whole myth that we can't be using uh, whiskey in cocktails, but I think we can. These ones are also really cool. Good to see Dav as well. Great question here from Plum and Plumber. What works best with the French oak? I think port in its actual sense from Portugal, or I also think that Apera and Tawny work really well. So I do like those rich fortified wines. We have had a couple of weird ones where it's a French oak American, uh, ex-American whiskey. And they are cool, but I think you need that nice fortified wine reacting with that European oak. And that's where I sort of think it works best. But I think the best way to do it is just definitely have to come down to our bond store, try lots of things. And that's the beauty of using wooden barrels is you don't know what's gonna come out of that every single time. So it's really quite interesting. And I think, although this isn't technically a fortified wine, I'm gonna finish on this because this is what I've been seeing a lot more in Australian sort of casks. And that's using a sweet, dessert sort of white wine. And I really just like them. I've been talking to lots of people and they're always just a great little thing. We're not gonna make any cocktails with this today because I think it's just quite too nice to do it. So this is from De Bortoli. Most people would know normally as their noble and that's made from botrytis. And botrytis is actually a type of sort of rot that occurs in the grapes, but it's actually quite good. It's a late harvest. So that by that late harvest, all the grapes have sort of turned almost sultanery and they're sort of, super sweet, super decadent, and then they make this gorgeous little dessert wine. And it's really, it's not what you expect. With Pedro Jimenez's out and out sweetness, this is a nice floral, nuanced, almost zesty kind of thing. We were gonna, I was tempted to put this into our cocktails, but I didn't think it'd work. However, you probably could make like a French 75 with it or something, just for a bit of fun. That's awesome. I'd love to, I, and we are seeing sort of sauterne casks, which is like a French equivalent. And they give this super light, zesty characteristic to the whiskey you're putting it in. And because we have that nice sort of wheaty, bready, new make spirit, it'd be really cool to see how we could do this. I was talking to, to Bill the other day and we've got Tassie Cast Company coming down on Friday. So we'll see what new barrels we'll get. They've got lots of cool little things. They've got some champagne barrels. They've got lots of Australian fortified wines. And it's really cool that we, I think as the Australian industry, that we're supporting Australian fortifieds rather than having to rely on the European ones. And I think in Australia, we do have quite the advantage with our fortified wine industry that we're not just seasoning casks where the liquid goes in for not a lot amount of time and you're not getting that beautiful liquid seeping into the barrels. Over in Europe, they're sort of just seasoning where they put a sort of port in there. In the old days, it would have been proper seasoning, but nowadays it's just quick in and out to get a little bit of that sherry or port finish in there. But in Australia, we've got the beauty of having these old, rich, cast filled with all these beautiful wines. Um, good, uh, another question for Plum Plumber. Can you have virgin oak in French or American? You can. So for bourbon, you need to have a virgin oak cask for it to be considered bourbon. And I haven't actually seen any virgin oak, which is French. We don't have any at the distillery because we think it might be a little bit too harsh for the kind of spirit that we're producing. But I know that there are Probably some Australian distilleries that do have it in their bond store. I know Deanston over in America and Brook Laddie with their Octomore, they've done the virgin oak thing. So that's the beauty of cask because there's just so much variety out there and things that you can sort of use. I'm gonna have one more sip and then we're gonna have a bit of a vote. Normally on Whiskey Wednesdays, we mix our lovely little single malt whiskey 
with something that pushes the boundaries. And today we've got two options. And I'm gonna put it up to the people because normally people just have a bit of fun with it. So we've got two options today. We can either mix Dr. Pepper, which is utterly horrific, but some people like it and I apologize if that offends you, or one that we've been suggested, I remember uh, Henry from Apple Distillery, coconut water. So we're gonna give it to people. I'm gonna wait like 10, se uh, about 30 seconds. People can have a bit of a vote. And then yeah, we'll have go through one of our, cocktail, our cocktails all again, and then we'll wrap up this edition of our Whiskey Wednesdays. Perfect. So, while I wait for some people to comment, and if no one comments, we go on Dr. Pepper, so. <laughs> this one's a super light, super refreshing little uh, fizz. I really like this. Over crushed ice would be even better. Bit of pineapple there for your garnish. Mmm, lovely. All right, so we're gonna to have to have a deciding vote here. Sona says coconut water, and Plum and Plumber says Dr. Pepper. The Whiskey Girl Collection just says, yeah. Good to see Australian craft spirits as well. I'm gonna try some of our, our Tokay Old Fashion, Topake, sorry. And that's a confusing thing is, because the names have been so, for generations have been the old style, it doesn't really matter if you stuff it up. That's lovely. Hope you're well, Australian craft spirits. Good to see you joining in. All right. So the next person who comments, Dr. Pepper or uh, coconut water, that'll be the deciding feature of what we mix our whiskey with on Whiskey Wednesdays, which has become quite a popular subject, uh, quite a popular topic. Good to see uh, Marigold & Co as well. Good to see the Farm Share Tasmania. Got lots of people in for a, uh, um, a Wednesday afternoon. I'm gonna get my, my glass ready. Put our nice, there we go. Dr. Pepper it is. Thank you, Australian Crafts. All right. So, I, I don't really like Dr. Pepper, but for the sake of science, and all the guys at the distillery also said Dr. Pepper, so that's what we're gonna go with. We're not gonna do half a, a full pour today, just because, uh, <laughs> Plum and Plum says, if you, do, if you do whiskey and Dr. Pepper, it will clear up any COVID issues. That would be a great little solution, because it is quite pungent. So we're gonna do uh, 15 mil of our lovely single malt. Dr. Pepper is an interesting drink. I think it's a cherry kind of cola. I found this at Coles, which is really cool. And now, here we go for another edition. That was a really good, uh, really good crack. We're just gonna put a little bit in. Uh, let me give it a quick stir. Let's have a bit of a taste. It's really surprising because I bought two cans of Dr. Pepper because I'd never really had it before. And the first time I tried it, it was a little bit odd. But with that whiskey in there, it becomes super palatable. You lose all that real bitter bite. And I think that's the beauty of having a, a bourbon cask. <laughs> now add toe okay. For the purpose of science, let's do this. Let's have a little bit of fun on Whiskey Wednesdays. How, how much? Let's add in a couple of, we'll add a little bit of toe okay. There we go. Thanks for the recommendation, Plum and Plum. Mmm. Yum. That actually becomes really, really nice. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, the Farmer Shed says, anything will be good with that whiskey. It's an absolute amazing little whiskey, this one. It's been really cool to see what different whiskies we've been producing lately. And it's really exciting. I think next week we're gonna actually launch our brand new whiskey, which is actually now available at Vintage Cellars, but we're gonna dedicate a whole episode to our new Alpha, which is our the first whiskey. So Alpha Crucius, it's the first whiskey in our Southern Cross series. So they're exclusively available at Vintage Cellars. And it, yeah, one, so it's gonna be five releases, one after each star of the Southern Cross. Brand new labels, a little bit higher ABV as well, and all new different things. So the cast we've got today, this is barrel 19. So 100 litre American oak, so maker's mark, and then we've finished it in a French oak blood tub, which held port, which is tawny. So what we're gonna, what it is really using is an Australian tawny. And that's, sort of, that's a great little question because it links back in. Then for our Southern Cross series, we're using something really, really cool. We're using our Hill Rock Estate barrels, which are quite a little cool, they're really interesting, and I'll talk about that next week. The bottles are on their way over from Tassie this week, and then, yeah, we'll dedicate a whole week to that. We'll taste it, we'll mix in some cocktails, and, yeah, available now at uh, Vintage Cellars already. So go to their website, have a check it out. 
That's actually really nice. I think that cherry note, the toke, the topake coming through, and our whiskey all react really well together. You know what? Oh, this is gonna be really controversial. That's probably sitting in second place at the moment. We've got vanilla Coke, we've got uh, Dr. Pepper, normal, normal Coke, uh, what did we mix last week? We had Iron Brew, Iron Brew, and then uh, Cola, uh, Pepsi, sorry. And that's gonna wrap us up for this week. <laughs> Australian Craft Spirit says, getting thirsty over here. Yeah, that's what we sort of wanna do on a Whiskey Wednesday. Showcase our wonderful whiskies, give a bit of education about what's going on. Showcase what is a fortified wines, because it's not something I think that gets talked about enough but it plays a really crucial part in the whole whiskey industry and especially in our Australian industry. So thank you all for listening um, and joining us on this Wednesday afternoon. I'm gonna go through once more. This is a super great little fizz that adding that fortified wine in makes it a really round drink. The lemon in there and the sugar syrup and our classic dry gin really gives it that zest. Our Dr. Pepper toke, uh, topake and whiskey that's a dessert drink for sure. Absolute dessert drink. And on dessert drinks as well, I think this is gonna be a great little laugh. That's awesome. Uh, Farmer's Shed uh, says neat. It is great neat on its own. Because of that bourbon maturation with the port finish, gives it that super classic McHenry style. You're getting that banana bread, bread and butter pudding, with that nice little, little hint of that apera cast coming through at the end. I have tasted it neat before, but because I've got a few drinks here today, we're not gonna go neat. But hope to see you well. Hope you're well, Shay. Hope you're all well down there. And that's going to wrap us up for this afternoon. Hope you're all well. Hope you're all staying safe. We'll be back on Sunday for our Sunday Sessions edition. And we'll be looking at our damson gin and wintry cocktails. So we're going to be making some mulled wine, some mulled cider, and all damson cocktails. So that's going to be a really cool episode as well. Thank you all for joining us. My name's Sammy Licardi. I'm the brand ambassador of McHenry Distillery. And from myself and the team at McHenry, hope you're all well. Stay safe and drink good whiskey. Cheers, guys. Thanks.